So this set of videos is over solving linear inequalities, and it fits perfectly here because we just finished up how to solve linear equations. Well, we know it had to be an equation in it because the definition said equation had equal signs in it. So my question to you is, is what do you think an inequality is if an equation has an equal sign in it? And most students, when I ask them this question, respond back to me, well, it's a not equal to sign. And that is a great first thought. However, inequalities are actually something else. We have four choices of them. These are the less than, greater than, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to. So this set of videos is over how to solve equation type of statements in it with these in it instead of with an equal sign in it. Well, to talk about this, the first thing that we need to do is we need to review the properties of equality that we use when we solve equations. And basically this said, if we start out with a true equation, then we can do anything to this equation as long as we do it to both sides. So we can add or subtract something to both sides, and we can multiply and divide something to both sides, and that keeps our equation balanced. The only extra stipulation that we had with this is if it's multiplication or division, we know that we cannot multiply or divide both sides of the equation by zero, because that either doesn't gain us any ground or it gives us an undefined statement in the first place. Okay, well, if those are properties of equality, let's see how we adjust those then for properties of inequalities. Now, I said before that we had four different inequalities here. I just picked the first one, and I just used it in all of these statements down here. However, each time we see this less than symbol in any of these statements down here, note that this less than symbol can be replaced by any one of the other inequality symbols. So these statements all remain true for all different four of our inequalities. So given that, let's see how they differ from before when we had equations and what we have now, which are inequalities. So the first two, the addition and subtraction principle over here, it says, we can add and subtract something from both sides of our inequality, and it remain a true statement. And that is the exact same as whether we have an equation or an inequality that holds true throughout. So let me prove this by using this example here on the right. So we see that we have a true inequality to start out with. 9 is greater than 2. So let's see how we can adjust this by using the addition or subtraction principle. I'm just going to prove one of them because you know the other one's going to follow the same suit. So let me do a subtraction and let me go ahead and subtract 6 from both sides of this equation here. On the left, when I take 9 minus 6, that gives me 3. And on the right, 2 minus 6 gives me a negative 4. However, my inequality sign, it, again, by this property of inequality over here, should remain the same. So I still do have a true statement. 3 is still greater than negative 4. So we see that with the addition or subtraction property, it does not matter whether it's equals or inequalities. It all works out the same. Now, moving on to the multiplication and division property, it looks like, the way I have it written here, it should also remain the same. But let me prove to you that this has an extra stipulation to it. So you see my disclaimer down here. It says, if you multiply or divide by a negative, then you must flip the inequality sign. And let me do this by using this example over here. So let me multiply both sides of this equation by a negative 6. If I take 9 times negative 6, that gives me negative 54 on the left. And if I take 2 times negative 6, that gives me a negative 12 on the right. And we want to know which one of these is bigger. Well, if I were to draw them on the number line, 
my negative 12 would be on the right of the number line. So negative 12 is actually bigger than negative 54. So these statements here only remain true if your C variable is positive. So your inequality statements do stay the same if you multiply or divide by a positive number, but if you multiply or divide by a negative number, then your inequality sign must flip. So it must go from something like a greater than symbol into a less than symbol. Okay, now that we talked about these properties, let's go back and review the steps of what we use to solve linear equations. How do we do this when we had an equal sign involved? Remember, linear means that we have a degree one statement or when our highest exponent, our highest power on the variable, is equivalent to 1. So if we have a linear equation, our steps are to simplify both sides if necessary, move things around the equal sign by doing opposite operations, addition and subtraction before multiplication and division. That should isolate our variable, so at this point here, we should have our answer. And then last but not least, we check our solution. These are basically the exact same steps that we're going to use when we solve linear inequalities, with that one exception. If we multiply or divide by a negative, then we have to flip the inequality sign. So let us use all of that on our first example here. Negative 6x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 34. So what we're going to do is we are going to mentally think of this as an equal sign, but don't actually change it to an equal sign because that will make things more complicated in the end. So our goal here is to isolate the variable, which means our first step is to subtract 4 from both sides. That gives us negative 6x is greater than or equal to 30 because my 4 cancel out on the left. Then my next step is to get rid of this 6 by dividing by a negative 6. So it cancels out on the left, my negative and my 6, leaving me with an x. And on the right, 30 divided by negative 6 gives me a negative 5. But remember, if we multiply or divide by a negative number, which we did in this problem, then that flips our inequality sign. So our final answer here is x is less than or equal to negative 5. So we see we solve these just like equations with that one exception. So let's actually see the formal steps to solving linear inequalities. As you can see, these steps mimic these steps to equations, except for that one statement, which I've repeated multiple times by now. Um, but our step three is actually a little bit different. Since our solutions to these problems are not one answer in the same, we have different formats that we can put these answers into. We can put it into a graph, into an interval notation, or set builder notation, all of which we have seen before. It really just depends on what your specific homework problem asks you for. So let us quickly review what a answer might look like. So I have three different problems on the left. Let's start with the top one, x plus 4 is equal to 0. If I wanted to solve this problem, we know that it would be very simple. All we would have to do is subtract 4 from both sides. That leaves me with the answer of x is equal to negative 4. So my solution then would be negative 4, or if it wanted the solution set, then we would put that answer in braces. If we wanted to graph the solution, it would be one point and one point only. It would be this very specific point of negative 4. So let's see how that differs when we go from an equation into an inequality then. So my second statement here, x plus 4 is less than 0, I solve it, of course, the exact same way by subtracting 4 from both sides. That leaves me with x is less than negative 4. 
Now I can put this solution set into one of two ways. Set builder notation. So the easiest way to remember this is set builder. You think of Bob the builder. Bob has bad teeth, he needs braces. So our set builder notation starts with these braces. We always have the stipulation x such that. And then whatever our solution is here, that's what we fill in the blank with. Now to come up with my interval notation, it's typically easier to graph it first. So let me jump over to the graph. If I want to graph x is less than negative 4, I find negative 4 and I graph to the left of it. My inequality is pointing to the left, so I shade to the left. Now, since this is just less than, then my endpoint has a parenthesis on it. So my interval notation is going to mimic this graph. My right number is negative 4 with a parenthesis, and my graph goes all the way to the left, which is negative infinity, and negative infinities also have parentheses. So there is a quick review of all of those notations. So let's do this last one down here. x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. Again, we solve it, of course, the exact same way. Leaves us with x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Our set builder notation, x such that, same thing, x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Our graph is we find negative 4 and we shade greater than it, or we shade it to the right. And since this one is or equal to, then this is a bracket. My interval notation is bracket with my left number of negative 4, comma, all the way to the end of the graph, which is a infinity. And infinities, again, are always parentheses. We can't ever get to our endpoints to include it. So let's go back to that example that we solved earlier, which we got the solution of x is less than or equal to negative 5. And let's put this answer in all three different notations. Now, I will do all three notations here, but you have to pay attention to what your homework asks you for. It might ask you for one, two, or all three of them, so you just have to do what it asks for. So on my graph, I just start with a number line, a straight line with arrows on both ends. The number in question in this problem is negative 5. I want to graph less than it, so I shade it to the left. And since it is or equal to, then I have a bracket cupping my graph. My interval notation mimics that. So I have negative infinity with a parenthesis on the left up to negative 5, including that there, so I, I bracket there. And my set builder notation has the braces with x such that, and then I just fill in my blank with my solution from over here. x is less than or equal to negative 5. Now, the only thing that we haven't done is back in our steps of solving linear equations, it asks us to check the solution. We can also do that with linear inequality. So let me check this solution here. Now, the difference between checking these and checking our equations is in equations, we only had one answer. With our linear inequalities, we see that we have a whole set of answers. So you can pick any answer in that set and confirm that it fits into your solution. So let me just pick any number that is less than or equal to negative 5. So let me just pick something like negative 10. Let me plug that negative 10 into my x variable and confirm that I end up with a true inequality. So negative 6 times negative 10 plus 4, I want to confirm that that is greater than or equal to 34. Of course, 64 is greater than or equal to 34. This checks out, which means that I have a true set of solutions for my problem here. All right, so that finishes up this video of introducing what inequalities are, all the steps and all the properties to solve them, and all of the different ways you can answer these problems here.